Good morning, Buren. Good morning, Avert. I interrupt uh, the movie. Um, uh, yeah, since uh, you coming in the broadcast uh, yesterday, we have some uh, partners, sponsors, and people are who are related to uh, the Predator Tour uh, in our studio. Well, due to the coronavirus, that's not possible for you. But I'm no. really happy to have you in uh, our broadcast. Uh, for the people who don't know you, please introduce yourself and uh, can you uh, tell the people uh, yeah, what your relation is with the Predator Tour? Yeah, sure. Good morning, Evert. Um, my name is Björn Schütz. I'm director of uh, Sportvisserij Zuidwest Nederland, a regional uh, angling sports and angling advocacy uh, organization with about uh, 200 angling clubs in the southwest of the Netherlands, obviously, and um, with uh, about close to 200,000 uh, 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 anglers associated there too. Um, well, and you and I, we, we, we go a short while already, don't you? Um, the thing uh, is that <clears throat> when you organize a tournament in the Netherlands, uh, one should have a license from the uh, uh, the lessee of the waters, uh, which is us, and therefore we are happy to facilitate and happy to uh, yeah to make this great tournament possible. That uh, unfortunately uh, cannot be held live, but I think uh, you found a very uh, creative and ingenious way of uh, having a tournament in an alternative fashion. Yeah, speaking about uh, the the alternative version, uh, what's your ideas and thoughts about that one? Well, so close by, uh, but never thought of. That was the first thought I had when you gave, gave me a call that uh, the live tournament uh, due to COVID-19 was not possible to be uh, held this year. Um, well, I applaud you for, for, for finding this way of still being connected, still having this great tournament uh, in a different fashion. Um, so I think it's very, uh, yeah, creative and uh, positive that uh, due to the restrictions that unfortunately face us all, that tournaments like this can be held anyway. Yeah, do you, do you think that there is a possibility that this can be the future of, of like doing events like this? Or, of course, it, it's looking into the future and nobody knows, but do you think there is a possibility that this this is really the future or can we go back to the normal situation next year? What do you think? Well, I hope that we can go back in the uh, the old fashion because I think yeah, uh, having angling tournaments uh, and participating in angling tournaments, uh, people would like to meet. Uh, they would like to see each other. They uh, have a little chit chat, a little bit of the bragging, uh, but also in the yeah the the acknowledgement of uh, being first and being applauded for that. Uh, just being part of a group, I think, and I hope that that it all, always remains. Uh, important and will remain the standard however having said that <clears throat> uh, even that COVID, i hope one day may be over uh, or be controlled in a, in a certain way it very might well be that this for for the good reasons is an alternative to uh, <clears throat> keep on the shelf as it is an easy way um, without uh, well traveling too much um, and uh, Therefore, it can be a, an alternative to stay, I think. Uh, but I really hope, uh, as angling is also a social sport, that uh, we will be able to go back. But I cannot look into the future. I'm not a doctor. No, so Nobody can. Nobody can, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think that this kind of, of sport fishing events, like we do it now, and I think it's pretty unique for the European way, is, is, is this... Is this going to be the standard for doing events like this also with an online or do you think well uh, it's better to go uh, if, if if the situation allows us to go ba back to the normal situation well online being online and streaming and bringing people home uh, close by uh, really adds up to a tournament uh, so um, with your tournament but also with other tournaments there's a um, big IT fingerprint to, to uh, events already. <clears throat> um, 
So, um, yes. However, just like I said before, sp uh, sports and practicing your, your hobby also has a social element to it. And uh, you got to feel, you got to see each other. You have to meet that, that we are social animals. We are people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would prefer life. Uh, but uh, live with a uh, uh, with a streaming service to it, I think that would only add up, and that can be uh, complementary to each other. Yes. Uh, what are your ideas and thoughts about uh, the fishing in general? Well, uh, as maybe uh, the people don't know it, but but you are also the host of two other really big competitions like uh, World Predator Classic and the Lure Masters. Um, what, how do you see it? Uh, what what will be the future of of sport fishing? Is is it uh, well as in retail? It's upcoming because a lot of people will fish. But but what do you think about events like this? Well, I, <clears throat> I think that events like this have a bright future. Whether it will be as big as it is in the U.S. Uh, currently. Uh, Probably not very soon. However, we can learn from them. Uh, we can improve our tournaments. Um, we see that particularly in the COVID-19 period, uh, a lot of people uh, go out and start fishing or start fishing again. Uh, we see the numbers of uh, um, members growing uh, explosively. So is there a potential? Absolutely. And <clears throat> whether you're small, young, old, uh, there's always a need to have examples and well the people in your tournaments and in the predator uh, in the, the wpc and in the other tournaments uh, uh, well they are the examples they are the real advocates uh, of our sports uh, not many people know that angling is the second base, biggest sport after football in the netherlands uh, <clears throat> and that says something so there's a great potential um, <clears throat> And there's still a long way to go to make it as big as it is in the States. Uh, but in the short period that I'm in England, now only for three and a half years, I've seen tournaments growing uh, already. So the future is bright. And um, I think that also the, the cooperation and the communication between the, the, the respective tournaments uh, is increasing and enhancing. And therefore, uh, we can learn from each other. Uh, we can support each other. I see participants like yourself uh, participating in other tournaments. So that gives us uh, good communication, open lines, and yeah, we are happy to facilitate. Uh, we are uh, yeah, uh, advocacy uh, partners for all type of angling sports, which also means this type, uh, the the big tournaments with big boats and. Yeah, particularly the the, the predator events. Uh, it's it's uh, also for people that don't know angling and see it for the first time. Yeah, they see it as a spectacular event. Uh, I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, of course, like you said, uh, uh, well, a lot of people sometimes think, yeah, you go out uh, to the water and uh, and and just fish. Well, there is much more than that because uh, yeah, we need uh, permits uh, from you guys also from the sport fishing agency, but also from the nature people and uh, Rijkswaterstaat. Well, talking about Rijkswaterstaat and the nature people, uh, you're also the front man. I, I think I yep. can uh, mention that from the, the Green Deal. Uh, we we yep. also have integrated the, the lead free fishing in our tournament. Uh, can you explain uh, the people why it's so important that, that big competitions uh, like maybe the professional fishermen give a good example, which I believe in too, as uh, fish uh, in, in uh, like lead free and environment, uh, good uh, stuff like that. Can you just in, in your own words uh, tell the people uh, yeah, why that's so important for our uh, fishing sport? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um... In the Netherlands, but also in other countries, uh, I presume, uh, there is more awareness as to how we have impact on nature uh, with uh, the, the bigger portfolios that uh, are on the table in Brussels and uh, in, uh, in other uh, governmental agencies. Um, also, uh, angling is part thereof. Um, the thing is, um, we don't practice our hobby and sports in a um, uh, stadium, for instance, or uh, in a confined area. We, we, we do what we do 
in public space. So that means that people in the public space, not necessarily anglers, have opinions about us. Um, well, old style fishing with lead, uh, it's something that uh, particularly uh, old anglers, uh, old of age that is, uh, yeah, they've always done it like that. Um, people in uh, uh, shooting sports, uh, they had bullets also with lead hats. Um, the thing is that lead is a poisonous uh, material um, and the fact that we are used to it for so long doesn't mean that it has to stay the thing is that uh, when you're when you depend on the public space you have to make certain that uh, you are acceptable to others that you are responsible in your behavior uh, actually in your behavior as you are on the spot uh, so you don't treat uh, fish the wrong way uh, uh, but also in how you, um, yeah, angle. Uh, if there are alternatives for 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 lead, yeah, why don't consider them? Of course, the situation is that uh, the lead materials are not uh, equally available as the as, as the lead products. But at least as a sport, in order to remain socially acceptable and to deserve your place in the public space. You have to invest. You have to invest in new materials, but you also have to invest in relationships. And that is something that we, we try to advocate. So uh, about two years ago, the uh, uh, Angling Federation, the Angling Federation uh, Sport Fisherij Nederland, so that's the, 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 the national board, so to speak, entered into an agreement with uh, several ministries, uh, with uh, water management bodies to uh, reduce lead use uh, with 30% in the first three years, and to ban it over, well, a period of 10 years, uh, which is, of course, a very long time. But when you would like to have a behavioral change, uh, a change of behavior, uh, to put it better, that takes time. It, 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 we have to get used to it. We have to give the market time to prepare. Uh, also, tournaments like this, you can't go from one day to another, okay, we can't use it anymore. Because participants need to have the alternatives, and the alternatives, well, you don't want them to be useless. It needs to be uh, a, com uh, a competitive alternative, and that takes time. But we are succeeding. The, the, the reduction of lead uh, diminishes rapidly, as, and therefore, um, yeah, I think we are good partners also for the nature parties that, that uh, you refer to. We want to be responsible, I and mean, in being responsible, um, yeah, we we are allowed in their areas. They want to be our partners as well in in um, nature uh, preservation and developments and things. Uh, so, um, lead free angling is basically a key to a door that opens, um, yeah, potential uh, that is key for angling in the Netherlands, but. Uh, certainly also in Europe, because this is not just a Dutch issue, it is uh, soon to be a, a European uh, uh, dossier to be discussed in Brussels uh, by the end of this year or early next year. Okay, well, uh, last question, uh, Björn, and it's also uh, due to the, the waters that you're uh, having uh, in your uh, district. Uh, it's uh, the Kier. Uh, well, the Kier is uh, an opening from our uh, real ocean, uh, the salt water. Yep. Uh, there was, in the beginning, when that project started, it was also uh, uh, comparing to the nature, so to say. Uh, people were afraid that there was uh, too much salt water coming in and it will destroy the water, especially Haring Fleet. Do you have some latest information for the, the viewers uh, about uh, that project, how it's running? Is it is it like uh, you guys, uh, uh, yeah, it planned it and so on? Can you just tell a little bit about that project? Yep. Um, <clears throat> for about thirty years, um, uh, angling societies, but also nature preservation organizations, uh, um, well, discussed opening the uh, the Harlem Free Dam. Um, which is part of the, the protection shield that the Netherlands has built in the southwestern delta uh, following the, the flood of 1953, uh, killing a lot of people. So for the right reasons, uh, these dikes and, uh, and dams were, were introduced. Maybe uh, not always 
in the best uh, interest of nature, as we saw it, but at least for the best intentions of making people safe. Um, uh, so after about 30 years, um, there has been a program which is uh, opening the dam uh, under certain conditions. Um, it is not that the full span of the dam is opened, it's only a, a few of these, these locks that are, that are uh, opened. And that has officially taken place uh, late 2019. And following that period, there is basically a uh, experimentation phase started. Um, experimentation phase in which uh, Rijkswaterstaat uh, yeah, very uh, precautiously uh, is testing what the consequences is when these, when these hatches are open and uh, what happens when these are closed. Reality is that uh, the dams are not open very often. It's only for the implementation period from now and then to see how fast the, the salt water is getting inland or is washed out again if there is a, a great amount of water coming from the European mountains into the Dutch rivers. So we can't say yes, uh, it's too early. However, um, what we expect is that uh, reality is that um, the salt water will not be permanently on the Haring fleet as the pressure of the uh, the, the, the the inland waters um, is stronger for nine months out of the 12. So there's only the ability of salt waters to come in, in on, to, on the, the Haring fleet for a short period of, uh, of three months. Um, and if it's coming too fast, then they close it again because also the the, the drinking water inlets inlets for the southwestern region is in the Haring fleet and well we cannot risk that the salt waters is getting past the inlands because then they uh, are damaged uh, and that will, will 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 be very costly so for them to for for these inlets to be uh, uh, replaced so it will only be a um, um, very small uh, change into the water lines from salt to to uh, to sweet waters. Um, um, the good thing is that with opening these hedges, um, fishes like salmon and trout uh, are uh, or sturgeon even if they uh, uh, are uh, released again uh, have the ability uh, to find their ways. Uh, onto the rivers and to do the natural thing and then uh, go back again. So there is the, the hard stop with the dam from time to time will be opened uh, so that fish can uh, migrate up the rivers or back to seas. Um, it will have some consequence, obviously, but not too much. That is at least what we expect. Um, but like I said, it's a little bit too early to tell. No. Well, sometimes it can be really surprising with the fishing because, yeah, me, myself, I already caught 40 k's away from the dam and sea bass. And last week, uh, the winner of uh, the competition, uh, the World uh, Crank Cup, uh, Henry Viss, he also caught a sea bass. So mm. sometimes it can be really surprising on the, on the freshwater channels. Yeah. And I think uh, personally, uh, well, you see it in, in Sweden as well, brackish water. Uh, yeah, I don't th think it, it is a negative influence for our uh, fishing waters. I think uh, uh, for, uh, 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 the opposite is, is even better, I, uh, I guess. Yeah, and the thing is, we, uh, if for some reason, maybe for this reason, the salt water impact on um, sander and, and, and pike for a tournament like yourself on the Haring fleet, uh, well, has uh, a little bit too much effect. Um, we are a facilitating organization, so it is always uh, possible to, to change the, uh, uh, the areas in which we can angle. Uh, so your tournament certainly will not uh, uh, suffer from that. Uh, we will find other ways uh, where the chance of uh, catching fish and to have a good competition uh, is upheld. Yeah. Well, Björn, I think uh, I want to uh, thank you for this uh, interview. It was uh, really clear for me and I hope for the viewers uh, as well. Uh, is there a last thing you want to say to the participants or maybe sponsors or anything in uh, general? Well, yeah, uh, keep up the good work and uh, enjoy being out. Uh, it's a little bit different this year, 
but still, uh, it is a competition. There is something to win, and there is nothing better than uh, just go out and fishing in a, in a competition like yourself. Uh, so I wish you all the best. Uh, have a great tournament. Uh, I keep my fingers crossed for the weather. Um, it will be a little bit chilly here in the Netherlands and in the afternoon a little bit uh, cold. Uh, so maybe other areas are a little bit in advantage, therefore. Uh, but uh, enjoy it and uh, see you soon. Yes, well, we, we keep in touch, of course. We work for many years uh, really close, so uh, that isn't the problem. Well, uh, Björn, thanks a lot for the interview that you made some time to uh, be in our live show. And, uh, well, we keep in touch uh, really soon. Thank you and uh, we keep in touch. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, that was an uh, interview with uh, Björn Schutz from uh, Sport Fishing Netherlands Southwest. He will give us the permits uh, for our competition. Uh, well, we continue the movie.